What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross, I like games, and today we need to have a chat about some new products that have gone and appeared at Premium Bandai, because oh my word, these new One Piece products are amazing and brilliant, and I feel very confident in saying you want these, ladies and gentlemen. You absolutely want these. So let's start off with the special good set former four emperors basically it is a special goods set which is based around the original four emperors and i love it now that i've read the whole of one piece i know all about this it makes me very happy indeed when the story of one piece starts we have four emperors it's these guys and it changes as we go through and no spoilers for those of you that haven't watched or read it but this is who we have at the beginning we've got kaido we got shanks we got Edward Newgate, and we've got Big Mum. So, is this worth $42? For me personally, I think yes, but this is the one of the two that is going to be the hardest sell. Now, this is coming in actually April 2024. Pre-orders have opened today. Although I think as I record, yeah, they're open now. And they close on the 5th, remember. Remember the 5th of November. Now... One thing that is very important to note, and they always say this, but let me say it again now. This is not guaranteed. What that means is they might quit it before the 5th of November. Remember, remember the 5th of November. But seriously, if you want this, make sure you order it sooner rather than later. There is the usual disclaimer on the Bandai site, which is to say... They have a certain number in mind as a maximum. If they reach that maximum, they will stop selling early. You have been warned. Now, it does come with a storage box. That's fine, I suppose. But it also comes with a playmat with lovely artwork of the four of them. And yeah, this is brilliant. Now, it does actually say Championship 2023 on there. Which, you know, cool. I believe it's because the map's been used in Japan. Doesn't really matter, ladies and gentlemen. It's got Championship 2023 on there. It's not technically actually for us part of the Championship series. Because, of course, it's just for sale on Premium Bandai. Don't worry, you put little heads about it. It's awesome. So, yeah. All four of the Emperors on there. Wonderful artwork. One of the coolest mats that Bandai have actually released so far. I am a big, big fan of this. Of course, Bandai have released... A four emperors playmat that have been given out at events. This is not that. That one was actually given out to the winner of the Treasure Cup. Same four emperors, incidentally, but that one was literally artwork of four cards all mashed in together. All those four artworks we have seen on existing cards. That is not what this is. This is brand new artwork. You have been warned. I love it personally. Oh, yeah, and then you get an Edward Newgate promo. An Edward Newgate leader promo. Brand new artwork by Anderson. Absolutely stunning. It is listed as a silver foil. Now, we don't have a huge amount of new information about it. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. But it is listed as silver foil. So, it's going to be different to what we've seen before. And it is a foil card. It's clearly the same kind of style as the non-secret rare leaders. But it's got silver foiling. It's just a different version of Edward Newgate. And look, obviously we have two versions of this leader from Paramount War. We've got the regular and the alternate art. Some of you are going to look at this and go, well, I already like the alternate art we've got. I don't need a new one. If that's the case, that's fine. I actually really, really like this artwork. But even if you don't want to play with this artwork, for me, it's, it's a collection thing. This looks absolutely stunning. Yes, $42 is a fair bit for a storage box, a playmat, and a promo. But look how cool they are, ladies and gentlemen. I feel good about this. The other thing that's gone and been revealed is the One Piece card game premium card collection best selection. Now, this is also just open today in terms of pre-order. But it closes on October the 15th. And remember, remember, October the 15th, it, it's not part of an old school rhyme. So, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, doesn't work the same. But this is another one I think you should go for sooner rather than later, if it's the kind of thing you're into. For me, it is. However, usual rules apply. If it's too popular, they will close the orders early. 
do not rely on it still being available on the 15th of October. Now, quick side note, for those of you living outside the US like me, maybe sold in other regions, we've seen this before, it is overwhelmingly likely the local game stores will be selling this in Europe, etc. I can't say for absolute certain, but that's the way it's been with literally everything. So I feel pretty good about this. And what we've got here is nice and simply a little seemingly cardboard folder with a dozen new versions of existing cards. As a side note, it's got that Bandai Card Games logo on, the first English language product, at least that I can remember, that has this on there. So it does seem like the Bandai Card Games branding is here to stay. Seems like Bandai are all in on their card games. And as someone who likes their card games, yeah, cool, sounds good to me. Now, what we've got coming in here, like I say, we've got a dozen versions of existing cards, but redone with brand new artwork. We've got six characters and six event cards, and I want to start off with the event cards because they are stunning. Now, of course, initially, the first time we got ourselves an alternate art of an event card, it was weird, ladies and gentlemen. It was genuinely a little bit discomforting and weird. We got Fire Fist back in OPO3. We had an alternate art of an event card. We hadn't seen that before. It was strange. These ones, and again, a lot of this probably comes from having read the manga and being able to appreciate it more. I adore these, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely flat out adore these. It makes me want to go and buy four copies of this to have a place of these because some of these, a lot of these, see a bunch of play. This is what it's designed to be, right? It's designed to be a bunch of cards that are played frequently in decks. It literally says that on the website. So we've got Radical Beam. That is the one that came around in OP01. This is your one cost counter. Your leader or up to one of your characters gains 2,000 power during this battle. Then, if you have two or fewer life cards, that card actually gains another 2,000 as well. Or as a trigger, it gives a character or leader an extra 1,000 power. That's still pretty good. So good, in fact, that like the leader Newgate, it's been restricted to one copy in your deck. We've got Paradise Waterfall, a lovely green one here. And that is a counter. Your leader or one of your characters gains 2,000 power during this battle. Then set one of your characters as active. Or as a trigger, KO one of your opponent's rested characters with a cost of four or less. And you're going to see a pattern here because there is exactly one for each color. So you've got Love Love Mellow. That is the blue card of choice here. Another card that sees a bunch of play. And this is the counter. Your leader or one of your characters gains plus 4,000 power during this battle. And then draw one card if you have three or fewer cards in your hand. Cool. Sounds good to me, ladies and gentlemen. And it sounds good to a lot of people. It sees a bunch of play. The purple card chosen here is Blast Breath. And that is a card that has been seeing play since it came out in Starter Deck 4 in the original run of Starter Decks. Counter, Don minus 1. One of your leader or characters gains 4,000 power. A 4,000 bump for one cost is good. So good, in fact, that you also have to don minus one, because otherwise it would be too good. Your black card here is Ice Age. You'll notice these are all very, very cheap. Mostly one cost of a couple exceptions. And we've got a one cost card that gives up to one of your opponent's characters minus five to their cost during this turn. Which, of course, that is what black decks like to do. And as a trigger, you KO up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of three or less. And then we finish off with the yellow card, Thunderbolt. And I hope you're all appreciating the artwork as we go through here. Because they're just stunning. The art takes up more of the card. There's no, you know, box taking up a third of the card or any of that rubbish. Although we do have text over the card, obviously. And they just look amazing. They're just taking scenes from the anime and just making them look stunning. Uh, yeah, so as for Thunderbolt, a two-cost card. You may trash one card from the top of your life area. And then KO up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of five or less. As a trigger, 
you just KO one of your opponent's characters with a cost of five or less. So those are the event cards, and I really do think the artwork has just been knocking it out of the park. But we do have a character for each color as well. So we've got Curly the Dan from OPO2. On play, look at five cards on the top of your deck. Find a red character of a cost of one or less, add it to your hand. Of course, one cost red characters have seen a bunch of play. So this is one that you kind of have to if you're playing that. We've got the OPO2 Nami. This is, of course, the film Nami. And I've told you many times lately, this is the best of the film cards. Three cost, 5,000 power. And on play, when attacking, pay one. Look at the top three cards of your deck. Reveal a film card other than Nami. Whack it in your hand. Great in these film cards. We've got the Vanilla Pacifista. Four cost, 6,000 power, counter plus 1,000. Why do we get Vanilla Pacifista? Bearing in mind we're supposed to be looking at good cards that people like. Well, the reason very simply is, don't forget we've got the Centamaru, the one from Starter Deck 3 that lets you play a Pacifista for free. Incidentally, yes, this is the Pacifista from Starter Deck 3. Speaking of Starter Decks, we've got a Buena Festa here. This is the one from Starter Deck 5. On play, look at five cards on the top of your deck. Find a film card other than Buena Fiesta. Add to your hand. Put the rest of the bottom of your deck in any order. This is obviously that standard one cost card we see in basically every color. Well, not even in every color, to be honest. For every type, for film, in purple, it's Buena Fiesta. Now, Suru is a very nice one cost card over in black. This is the on play. Give one of your opponent's characters minus two for the turn. And of course, like I keep saying, black cards like reducing cost. It's what they do. And then you've got Charlotte Amond. This is from OPO4. Fun little side note, the only Charlotte Amond we've seen so far. And the first alternate art it's had. Now we've got counter plus 2000, always a bonus. And activate main once per turn. You may trash a card with trigger from your hand. And then rest up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of two or less. Yeah, sounds good, ladies and gentlemen. And then, of course, when they're rested, you can attack them or they can't block or something along those lines. So there we go. These are two phenomenal products I'm very excited about. But now I want to hear from you guys. Is this the kind of thing you guys are into? Are you picking up either or both of these? Tell me in the comment section. Good ups. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk about One Piece and a bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, and all kinds of fun things. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.